Give me a nod when you're ready. Shooter's ready. Stand by. Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of Bolts and Bourbon. I'm Frank Gao, joined by my co-host, Matt Gundlach. Today we have David Ankeny on, aka Angry Dave, as he's known in this section. Dave uh, served as a Marine, uh, but he is more known in these parts as a match director, specifically the match director for Delmarva. The uh, Delmarva sectional championship happened uh, in April. Really great match, had some really good competition come out. I think there was about three, over 330, 335 shooters that came out, so very big match as well. Um, but yeah, we wanted to get Dave on for a while. Um, Dave, I'll admit that I'm not super familiar with your service history. I know that you were a Marine. I know that you, uh, mm-hmm. you, uh, you, you did some long range shooting, but, uh, could you fill us in a little bit? Uh, so I was in from 1988 to 1995, a lot, long, long time ago. Um, I had five MOSs, uh, primary was a 311, uh, scout sniper. Uh, combat diver, marine security guard, and a uh, water survival instructor. I think that's five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sounds right. <laughs> we'll bring out the um, crowns next time you want to count. <laughs> I know, I you know, I don't have any of those here. I do have gummies, so I should I should have laid them out. So if you count. look, if you look behind me, I have two boxes of crowns. I'm surprised those aren't in a uh, glass case that says break in case of emergency. <laughs> you always need an emergency stash. Um, that's pretty cool. So you were very comfortable in the water. I mean, as a recon Marine, obviously, um, but you were very comfortable in the water when you uh, were in. Yeah, I um, went through the uh, water survival instructor course. Uh, and then I ended up being the only instructor on Camp Lejeune for second Marine division. So I qualified thousands and thousands of Marines uh, to swim once I got that. And I even did some specialized uh, classes for safety swimmers so that when units deployed that they could do their surf qualifications for Amtraks um, because you you need to have swimmers for that as well. Um, Got lucky with the combat diver. Um, I was the only one qualified on base to go. (laughs) <laughs> so I got to go. Uh, I didn't uh, ever use it, but I at least I get the bubble for it. Um, and then I also participated in the very first scout swimmer course. So we kicked that off and I actually did a couple real life uh, swims in like into Kuwait, uh, swam into the Yemen. Um, didn't, well, they were going to have a swim into Somalia, but uh, the waters are uh, a little too shark infested. Huh. Uh, they just hmm. they decided not to swim. They just drew, rode the boats right up on the beach. <laughs> Thank God. Now I, I I got a quick question. Like when you had to do the rescue diver thing over there, um, was it more to check if the area was safe from any any things whenever bringing boats into port? The kind of like what the Navy EOD dive, divers do, or was it yeah, for other other things? For, for Kuwait, uh, since it was actually roughly, it was the war was actually already over. So we were just more or less checking for barbed wire, obstacles, things like that in the water. Um, so you basically just swim in. Uh, hope you don't get tangled on something, which there was a lot of stuff in the water. So it was pretty, pretty good that they decided not to do it. Any kind of beach assault there. So. Yeah. Um, but I mean, so you served back in the nineties. Um, but you know, part of what you do as the, as a match director in Delmarva is, uh, you, you came out and you volunteered during championships and the Marine Corps shooting team comprised a lot of your volunteers for the Delmarva sectional championship. So, um, you know, what are some things that have like 
surprised you about how like Marine Corps culture has stayed the same over all those years uh, when you're dealing with today's Marines? Um, I don't know if it stayed the same. <laughs> I mean, you, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, the spirit of war is still the same. I mean, I mean, you guys are still really tight, and the you're willing to help out with whatever it's needed, and, and you know that's what people look at Marines for, you know. But uh, I don't, I don't, I, I see it's a little bit more relaxed now mm -hmm. than. I think when I was in, um, I wouldn't dare call you by your first name, as obviously I still don't call you by your first name. <laughs> so, Honest. I, 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 I think that's good. I mean, shouldn't be so stressed out all the time. Uh, so I, I think I think the Marine Corps probably, it, it, sh it looks like it's going in the right direction for me, from what I can see, because I'm not in. So. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll kind of... Whenever I first came in, I I, I think, uh, I mean, I came in in 2002, so I came in in a lot closer time period than when you got out, Dave. So, like, our, our time, you know, when I came in, it was a lot more stressful of an environment. Like, we had a platoon sergeant that if, if you crossed him the wrong way, it was straight. Like, we called him, like, his name was Gunny Lambert, and we called him, we had, uh, we had a name from, two names from, uh, El Diablo Negro. Or um, what was the other one? I don't remember at this point. Um, but he was a fucking he was a crazy son of a bitch, and he had like you you tiptoed around him. Um, but he was tactically sound. He knew what he was doing. Uh, he knew how to develop the platoon. Um, in in your right, I think in many ways things have gotten a little bit more relaxed. But back whenever I first came in, we weren't allowed to ask the question why. Um, you know, right. it, it just never happened. Why? Because I fucking said do it. Nowadays, like we have a lot of people who can actually think for themselves and they're not a bunch of fucking idiots. Um, and so when they qu ask the question why they're not asked or they're not questioning you and what you're you're telling them to do, they're trying to find out what the intent is to find the best way to do it. Exactly. So in many cases, I, I I think I think today's Marine Corps in many cases is a lot more educated um in how we can get things done more efficiently in a lot better way. Agreed. I agree with that. Yeah, definitely. Um well let's talk a little bit about the competitive shooting side. When did you get into competitive shooting and did you do any competitions while you were in the service? Uh, I didn't even know there was such thing as competitions when I was in. Um, for one, I spent most of my time deployed uh, with the seven and a half years that I was in. Uh, at least five, five and a half of that was deployed. I, I was hardly ever back here. Um, I didn't start doing competitions until 2013 when I moved back from St. Louis. Mm -hmm. And... I just saw a video about it and I was like, okay, well, I looked it up. It was IDPA, of course, at that time. And I went down to Arundel and I shot my first match down there with Matt and Jason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't like either one of them at that time. <laughs> <laughs> Jason didn't follow the rules because he hates IDPA. So I was like, what is this guy? But I was like, okay, this is fun. Um, but they talked me into getting out of IDPA and into USPSA. So started hanging out more with them doing that. And I started doing three gun. Uh, I was doing that a lot and I suck at the shotgun. So it started going down to two gun. <laughs> and ever since then, I've been going at it pretty strong. I mean, I try to shoot at least two matches a week or a month. If not, I can. If I can, I'll shoot every weekend. But my schedule doesn't allow that most of the time. Mm. Yeah, it, it's definitely something we can get away with in this area. The um, <laughs> there's just so many so such match density that you know every weekend there there usually is something going on depending on uh, how far you're willing to drive. So that's pretty yeah, within cool. two hours of us. There's well, for, you know, for me and you, yeah. There's there's at least eight ranges to go to yeah so there's a match every weekend 
Yeah. Uh, now you mentioned that some of your initial introduction was three gun, multi gun, and also uh, eventually two gun. Uh, have you tried? Have you tried? Have you been to one of the PCSL matches on a uh, Quantico? I have not done PCSL yet. Okay. Yeah, I'm just curious to see what you think because uh, Shadowhawk started running it too, and it's quite popular here on Quantico as well. Um, but in terms of like actually managing the matches instead of uh, you know competing at them, when did you start directing matches? Uh, so I dabbled in doing locals, um, probably starting around 2017. It was like a couple a year. Um, it's been like mainly like a rundle filling in a month here and there. And then I talked to Fredericksburg about starting the Virginia State Championship in 2019. So I started running that and I ran it for three years um, before somebody else took it. Mm -hmm. And let's see what, what, two, two years two, three years without having any major matches and just dabbling in the uh, local match scene again. And then I got back into it again with Del Marva just this past month. Yeah. And I mean, Del Marva was a fantastic run match. We're definitely going to stop talk a lot about the, uh, the actual match itself, but I want to talk about stage design because, you know, Matt, Matt, is a pretty good stage designer. Um, I have the benefit of having Alex Goking over in Quantico. I have not ventured into stage design at all. And Virginia State last year and Delmarva this year both got compliments for their stage designs. And I know uh, you 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 did, I, I would say, almost all of them. How long have you been designing stages? Uh, 20, 2017, I'd say. Okay. They, they were pretty bad. <laughs> I mean, you got to start were, off somewhere, right? So, so I was doing them mostly for a rundle, and they didn't have a lot of walls, but they had millions of barrels. So if I were to, like, pop up a stage from back then, you'd see, like, a million barrels instead of walls. And if you tried to do that today, I mean, if even try to change it with the walls today, mm -hmm. the stages just weren't that great. Um, but as the years went along, it just got better and better at it. Seeing other people um, looking at some of the, uh, especially the international designers, um, Ipsic. I, I've been drawing on that a lot here lately. Um, you probably noticed that at DeMarva, there were more Ipsic style stages, but with USPSA rules. Right. Um, kind of helps. When you start running into a rut, uh, Ipsic stages can be a slightly easier to design. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where I'm leaning right at the moment because I'm, I'm I am struggling at the moment with uh, coming up with uh, some designs because I've been doing it for so long. Okay. Yeah, that, that... I'll, I'll I'll grab people's designs and modify them just like they do mine. And... Yeah, yeah. Hey, that's, know, absolutely. Uh, a lot yeah. of your best match directors do that, though. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It's complimenting the person who originally designed it, and then you know you you fit it into your 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 match to where it can work within the regulations of your range. Like, so, like, it's not stealing; it's modification yeah. and complimenting. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you got to draw somewhere. I mean, mm -hmm. eventually, you just run out of ideas. It, it gets hard. Yeah. Uh, could you name some of your influences, perhaps on the national or even the local stage uh, that, you know? Um, well, my, the first person that I, you, you can tell I, I can give credit to is Joe Roberts um, up here at Antonali, if okay. I'm even saying that per, not, per, correctly. But, uh, he, uh, he, he came down to help with championships, didn't he? Was it him? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He I volunteered I to come down that one and help us out which was yeah. great he even came down to del marva and helped set up one day just okay. just come down to help set up which was a great help yeah and i mean i value his uh his uh his view on things because he's been designing stages long before i even knew uspsa was a thing so he's got a stack of like fifty thousand stages yeah <laughs> ridiculous yeah that's pretty cool um, so, I mean, if someone's looking to start, uh, designing some stages, helping out their local match, what would you recommend to them? So I think the first thing is if you help set up, 
a good design stage, you'll see how it should look. Um, a lot of people just, oh, I'll design a stage and it's just eight here, eight here, eight here, um, just because that's the way they see it. If they go out and they actually set up stages, they'll see things differently and it'll help them get better ideas of when they're doing it. it, it I, I can't stress it enough to go out and set up because it, it'll show you different angles and things like that, especially if you're not good with SketchUp. Yeah, no, definitely. SketchUp, well, SketchUp is 95% accurate. You know. Yeah, I noticed that... Um... Yeah, your your SketchUp designs are more or less dimensionally accurate. That's something I saw that uh, when we we're setting up Virginia State. But I would say uh, what helped me before I took over Quantico was uh, setting up with Keanu over at Thermot. And uh, I, I guess part of it was process, but part of it was, yes, the way he translated the stage design onto the ground because he didn't design all the stages. Uh, some of them were from, uh, I think one of them was from Hunter Clark and a few others. Um, I got to ask, so after having shot Virginia State, uh, your stages, and also Delmarva, what is, uh, what's the obsession with um, torturing people with fixed time? <laughs> That's a new thing. <laughs> um, I, I like it. It's something different. Um, I don't know if other people, I don't, I don't get too many complaints about it. I think the time... Yes, we've had problems with figuring out the exact timing that we should be using. Right. Um, they're just they've just been a little bit too spicy. Um, maybe a two, three tenths more, and it would have been perfect. But again, only ten percent of your best shooters should be able to even finish it. Not not every shooter should be able to do it. It's, it's you have to figure out what you can do, and I think that's what I like about the fixed time is I'm, I'm shown 60 points out there. I'm given a spot where I can go get 40, definitely get 40, even if I take my time. Mm -hmm. If I go a little faster, I might be able to go over here and get 50 and 60. Um, so you got to know what your ability is. And that, that actually challenges the shooter's knowledge of their own skills. Um, then some people just, just get up there and they're like, well, you know what? I'm going for it no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. You get, you get the Which send it mentality. I, I like to see that. <laughs> yeah. This, there, uh, there will be a, there will be another fixed time stage at Delmarva next year. So. I'm sure it's, it's part of your MO, dude. <laughs> You're going to say something, Matt? Yeah. Just quickly, uh, have, in terms of stages and designs and everything, have you seen an evolution of uh, of stages over the period of time you've been competing? Like, what are some noticeable differences you've seen uh, over this period of time in in changes, challenges, and uh, that you've put shooters through? So the biggest change I've seen all around is there's been less gimmicks. Um, and it is. Uh, you know, you got to run up the, you know, platform and, and slide down this and things like that. I don't think it's more more of a two gun thing, not a or a three gun and two gun, not a USPSA thing. You could certainly do it, but I haven't seen a lot of that anymore. Where that used to be really common, especially up here for Area Eight and Mid Atlantic, that's that's pretty much gone away. Um, they're more relying on your ability to move fast and shoot accurately um and none of this uh big physical challenges because uh, obviously a lot of people can't do all those physical challenge parts so it, it kind of becomes a little bit unfair for some people but again obviously you're not going to win if you can't do everything but yeah i i've i've seen that and i've also seen that a lot of this Stuff has gone more toward more ipsic central where the stages are smaller they're not as big as they used to be um, round count is usually between 14 and 28 um, but i find that those are they, they're actually harder um, even though they're low, lower round count they're they're just harder stages yeah, so I noticed uh, Delmarva 
didn't have a 32 rounder i don't believe there was i did not 20 not, not 29 was the largest i had yeah so i mean i think there is a bit of stage design philosophy out there that thinks that you have to get to third there has to be one 32 round course but i agree with you uh if the stage has a flow and it's technically uh, sufficiently like technical and challenging enough um and you're forcing everyone except for the pcc shooters to reload um, I think that adds enough adds enough elements in there uh, for everyone to enjoy. Um, but yeah, is that that seems like it's something you've more or less embraced in your philosophy, yeah. But going with that, okay. Um, so I have already started designing the stages for next year. Um, I do have a thirty four and a thirty five round stage. Oh, good. Well, the emperor will be pleased. <laughs> um, the, uh, yeah, I would say. Um, you haven't made your way out to Dragon's Cup, have you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's far. I don't know if you uh, quite travel that far, but that that is the that stage. Almost every single stage or that match, every single stage is over thirty rounds, um, and they can get away with it because of their base sizes and because of the amount of props. Yeah. I think they also did a phenomenal job at like that was by far like the best like the best set of stages at a major that. Uh, that, I, that I've been to. Um, but going back to Delmarva, uh, how far out did the planting start? So this last one, um, we first thought of the idea in May of last year. Um, Richmond decided that they weren't going to do it again. Uh, so soon after that match was done, as soon as we got to Shadowhawk for the next local match, I talked to Derek um, and I talked to Robert Hewins, who, even though he's not, you know, a match director or anything like that, he was, uh, in, he influenced getting the match, uh, mm -hmm. going. So we had to convince Lynn and Randy. So that took until around September before they finally decided that they were going to go ahead and do it. And then Derek announced that it was going to be held there. And... I mean, as soon as she said that it was a go, I started pulling my files for stages that I had. I had a lot of stages that I had sent over for World World Shoot um, that weren't used, so I used some of those. So, I mean, you, you you shot some stages that were basically what were used at World Shoot. Um, I did November. They, uh, I opened up registration and commenced to buy and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it it took a while. I mean, I get, some people can do it shorter time frame. I like to spread it out so I'm not so stressed out with it. Mm -hmm. So I know I can get everything done. Like I'm already I'm already designing stages now. So. Yeah, I mean, I I think the sorry, sorry, Matt. Um, no, the good. forethought, the forethought was clearly there. Um, I think you're one of the few major matches that got a matchbook out uh, at a decent at a decent time before the match. So, I'll, oh, wait, I, I, I'll, I'll release it a month. Did, a month I mean that that's match. great. That's, that's great. When I'll release it. Uh, certain matches will release it like a few days before. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> or never, but, or or never, you know. That, that's a bit Atlantic thing. They yeah. do that on purpose. They yeah. do it on purpose. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. Cloak and dagger. So a big part of Del Delmarva was honoring Medal of Honor recipients and included a fundraiser for the Post Traumatic Stress Disorder Foundation. Uh, was that always a part of the match from the very beginning? Um. So the Medal of Honor um, recipient one. That was definitely a part of it because uh, I always do that. So if you go back to the Virginia State matches, um, I did a one was a Medal of Honor recipients from the state of Virginia. Uh, then I did all the battles that were fought in Virginia the second year or it was the first year. But um, and then the last year that I ran it, it was a I polled people for people that had lost uh, service members and uh, other friends. So I, every, every stage was named after somebody that somebody on the range knew. 
to that was a little bit more special um and then this past one was medal of honor recipients um but with the post-traumatic stress disorder foundation uh robert Hughes wanted to do a side match and i had done a um post-traumatic extra disorder foundation uh, raffle before for one of our roll sizers at uh virginia state and we got we got almost four thousand dollars for that one and i decided okay well he wanted to do a side match well why don't i just get a get somebody to lend me lend us a gun buy some ammo and then everybody shoot it at ten dollars the half of it goes to the winner, half of it goes to the foundation. And hopefully the winner will say, hey, go ahead and give the rest to the uh, foundation, which ended up happening. Matt Hempel won. And we that was around $1,700 is what we collected for them. And I sent that out as soon as he said that he wasn't going to, uh, he wanted to donate it back. But I, I try to do that. Sometimes it's a little hard, depending on the range. And if we have anything that's that's good to uh, to raffle off to actually make some money for them, um, I mean it's a foundation that's yeah, uh, you know, it, it helps me because I also have post traumatic stress disorder, so you know, it's just one that I picked that uh, it's just a little close to home. Yeah, no, absolutely, no. That's I mean that's an honorable endeavor, and you know. Obviously, you have. We're all service members here. You're you're honoring those who served before us, those who passed uh, in service, and and those who remembered or, or served with individuals. And you can't really get more. Uh, you, you can't get any any more honorable than that. I guess is the best way I could put it at this moment. Um, but a lot of veterans, like me included. Um, we have trouble finding our own tribe after getting out of the service. Uh, in what ways has USPSA filled that niche for you competitively and uh, community wise? So, wait, when I got out, <laughs> I, I, I have to admit it was, it was really rough. Um, like I, I didn't, I had amnesia from, from the explosion. So my, for the, whew, man, like 10, 10 years after I got out, you know, life was pretty rough. Finally getting to where I could like hang out with people. Um, so going to these matches and hanging out with people, uh, meeting other service members, you know, that shoot these matches or even people that didn't serve. And then when you're done shooting, you can go hang out for lunch and stuff. It, that for me that helped out a lot even, even if they weren't service members it's just being able to talk to people mm -hmm. you know is good um competitively i wouldn't say i'm competitive at all <laughs> i i want to have fun more than anything when i go out there yeah i want to win i'm capable of winning but i would rather have fun first so if i'm not having fun a lot of times that will keep me from even being able to be competitive at all so i try not to take it too seriously most of the time yeah i mean you just want to hang out cut out cut up with your friends and just shoot guns and that's what it comes down to like i, I was yeah. you know me and frank talk all the time and you know i was talking to some other friends and to me it's it's like i've been doing this for 10 years and for about five of those years it was a job and and my biggest struggle was you know, when I got out, it was, it just wasn't as much fun anymore. And it like, just because it was such a job. And so I just had to turn it into, well, I'm just going to go hang out with friends. And so that's where my focus really turned. Like, uh, hanging out with friends are first shooting is secondary is kind of how I turn things and, in, uh, into it. And that's, that's what kind of kept me going. I want to bet you guys. I mean, I didn't even know there was a Marine Corps shooting team. Um, I did, I, when I first found out, uh, I was at Peacemaker. They were just hopping out of a white van. And I mean, not to use the, I know y'all don't like the word, but a bunch <laughs> of boots. <laughs> they were like a bunch of boots. 
uh, but it, they were all great people. It, we understood each other. Mm -hmm. so it was really great. And then meeting you, for, uh, coming up on Virginia State and stuff, I mean, that, that, really, that really turned things around, I think, a, a lot for me, too, because hanging out with you guys, the Marine Corps shooting team, has been great. And like, I get to work with uh, Staff Sergeant Corps soon, Gunny Corson, um, this weekend. And I'm actually glad I got another Marine on stage with me because it just, it, it makes you, it, things a little it bit more It solidifies that bond, yeah. You have a bond yeah. with, like, we may not serve during the same time, but we understand each other and and and, and we can cut up comfortably knowing that we're not going to, we're yeah. not going to offend each other. <laughs> I guess that's oh, the best way of putting it. That, 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 they were great at the Marine Corps Championship Series because they had at the young Marines that just come out of school. And I was, I was like, well, where's my boot? Oh, well, Dave, you can't call them that. <laughs> I remember whenever I was an, S I, I was an infantry school instructor back in like, well, I served that billet from 11 to 14. And I think it was probably around 12 or 13. They came out to all the instructors like, Hey guys, you can no longer use the term boot. And we we're like, what the fuck? Where the fuck did that come from? This is bullshit. They're, they're fucking boots. Gun lock, shut the fuck up. And then right, we were told, you. <laughs> and then we were told we can't use the word tactically acquire anymore. And we we're just like, what the fuck? Oh man. Yeah, they were taking the fun out of it all. Uh, but uh if we can't tactically acquire things here, we're in trouble. I don't know. I know. <laughs> Go give me that thing over there. Don't ask questions. So <laughs> USPSA shooters in Dolmarva have a ton of great options for local and major matches, really an embarrassment of riches. What is something that shooters might take for granted that you would like to express as a match director? Set up. <laughs> <laughs> People don't want to come. They want to come shoot it. Nobody wants to help set it up. Yep. If, if we don't get it set up, then you don't got a match. You don't have a match. I mean, Arundel, uh, Major Gal knows he, two people set that up. Yeah, I I helped. Ooh. I helped last month after I shot Del Marva, and then he canceled it because of rain. <laughs> rain. Everyone's <laughs> <laughs> shooters now. It was it was a misting, our best. It was too. It wasn't even bad. No, it wasn't. But yeah, I mean, we have so many places to go shoot. We do have a lot of people that do help set up. And they're great people, but they're getting burned out. Oh yeah. They, and and, if, and and you have a lot of people that do, do complain, but yet they're the ones that aren't helping at mm -hmm. all. And I just think that's what people take for granted is is what goes on behind the scenes to get these matches up and running. How however bad or good they are, um, somebody still had to work on it. And you you got the the, the the I'll say the privilege of going and shooting it, mm -hmm. you know, because somebody else did the work. Yeah. Well, I, I you know, and and I'll put this out there because I remember when I first started shooting, um, I didn't I didn't know much about the competitive shooting sports. I was just getting into it. So like ro roing and and setting up and all that. Like typically, like whenever I started um, showing up for Tar Heel. Like the match was already set up when you get up there, when, when you show up on a Saturday morning and like that, that match there was like shooting a major match every single month. That's how, that's how yeah. good it was. Um, but you know, one thing that I, I didn't know is, you know, how big of a help being an RO was. I thought I was, I would be taking advantage of the match by going and ROing, not realizing how much match directors really need help with that. So yeah. How yes. how how would you best express to to the community um, how to get in touch with people who 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 want to help but don't know how? Uh, I mean, I think I think we do a good job, and at least in our section in our area um, of putting out. You know, we we have a lot of RO classes, um, and and they're announced at all the matches. If even you don't even have to be an RO, a certified RO, mm -hmm. just just step up. Um, somebody will stand there with you. It, if 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 somebody just took 
a timer and a tablet once, a different person once every stage, nobody would work hard at mm -hmm. all. And if, if, if you don't know where to go or if you're afraid to ask, don't be. I mean, everybody's pretty friendly. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you don't know how to run the timer or the, well, the timer's a little different, but if you don't know how to run the tablet, you just ask. Somebody can easily show it to you and they'll stand there right with you. I, I probably remember run it for you. <laughs> one, I would say one of the biggest frustrations I have sometimes at a at a at local matches, like in, in Quantico, for instance, whenever we run like the two gun, three gun matches there, it's like, you know, it'll be me and like Go King, and we will be the only two people ROing the entire time uh, there. And and you know that gets like one, you can't have the best match performance because your head is never necessarily in the game, but. But two, you just get burned out because you're running up and down the range right. the entire time, just watching that shooter, making sure he's safe, you know, scoring everything. And 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 there's been a couple instances where people, you know, you're getting ready to shoot and you're like, hey, I need you to take the tablet. I don't know what I'm doing. Well, come over here. Let me show you. I, I, I don't feel comfortable you. doing this. I was like, dude, I just like <laughs> you. you you're going to get comfortable. Yeah. Like. You're going to learn like and and like it, it turns out well in the long run, but it's like, hey, come on, man. Like you, you can't just be out here to just shoot. Everybody is taking their turn, you know, delegating tasks. It's your turn to do this and you will learn something about how to be a safer competitor and, and, and you will be able to watch somebody and see how they do some things because half the time when people or other people are shooting, everybody's just kind of talking. But now you're actually having to watch yep. how somebody shoots and you become a better shooter for that. Like we had a conversation, you know, multiple conversations, you know, with people on the team. How has, you know, Peyton Garcia just said it this last week whenever we interviewed him. How has ROing big matches helped your game in, in USPSA? it's it's opened my eyes to things I, I didn't even realize were options and, and i've started implementing those aspects into my own performance and it does help yep. so um here's here's a big question and every every match director has a different answer how do you see the balance between what you work on personally whenever de um when developing a, uh, a match and what you're okay with delegating to other volunteers? Uh, I think so. I think mine's a little different because I really only do major matches. So for me, delegating is very hard. And that's just personal. Uh, there's a few people that I trust to do some stuff for me. Um, I'll usually, all like as far as... Uh, getting staff that's that's always me I will, I'll, I'll do all the staff stuff um sponsors i'll i'll hand out to somebody else um obviously not a good talker uh you tell me no i'll probably be like well screw you too no <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> um so i i I'll, I'll delegate sponsorship but everything else is usually all me um I probably should delegate some more because it gets pretty stressful at times. Uh, even even when we start setting up, I was called the Fuhrer of Fault Lines <laughs> at Del Marva. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a very good Derek, one. the the Fuhrer of Fault Lines. Yeah, yeah, because I and, and at one point. Uh, Angry Dave came out because they were trying to put targets up on the sticks before I got to it. I was like, I'm trying to set up one, tell people one thing, which is an array. It's, you know, a, a, a shoot, no shoot, no shoot. And I wanted it, you know, this is how it's going to be. And this is how every single one of these targets that are like this are going to be. But yet at the time I'm trying to tell them this, other people are yelling and starting to put up targets and I had to, uh, <laughs> and I, I had to go all, all Marine Corps, uh, old fashioned Dave on them. <laughs> you know, obviously I apologize later on, but I, I it, 
things have got to be pretty meticulous for me. So I I don't really delegate too much. No, and that's understandable, you know. Everybody does things differently. Everybody has their own different level of comfort um, in who they, it, it comes down to trust, who they trust to do certain things. If you don't have that with certain yeah, people. There, there are, there are like the people that we had up there to build the stages, like at Delmarva, I could send them off to another stage and have them start it and mm -hmm. not worry. Yeah. I can come over and, and, and tweak it. Yeah. Um, and like Matt Schwartz. I could just give Matt Schwartz my drawing and I won't have to worry about him at all. Oh yeah. He'll go build a stage and he knows exactly what I want. And he's also very, very meticulous in the fear of fault lines as well. So <laughs> I, I, I know if I give him something, it'll, I don't have to worry about it. And then, like I said, everybody that helped me at Delmarva in the end, I know some of them just were in a hurry. Mm-hmm. But I know I could send them. They would set up a stage 80% accurately. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great because you can just come behind and you know you don't have to do that much. <laughs> hey, tweak this over here, put this over here. All right, yeah. we're good here. Which is, Go ahead, which stake is great. it down. Yeah, no. When you're trying <laughs> I, I I find myself sometimes whenever I design a stage and I see it get set up somewhere, I'm like this isn't my fucking vision. That's not what I wanted. But you know, at the end of the day, it's like, okay, whatever. Hey, this, this carries the vision over enough. And like what we do at Quantico is it, it's more club level. So it doesn't, you want to give the best product, but you know, at a major match where, you know, prizes and stuff doesn't like hurt that. as bad as a level one. Yes. Yeah. You, you, you definitely have to have that level of meticulousness in order yeah. to give you because you're servicing a large group of people and and you know people i mean let's be real there's there's high drama in all these sports and social media whether it's good or bad fucking talks and it's like well, you don't, you yeah you don't want that negative talk you, you want to make sure you give the best product forward for the community that's coming out to support you yeah, because I mean, I I design stages for um, Shadowhawk, uh, so like every every stage that you shoot at Shadowhawk are mine, but they set them up. Now they they have people set up that aren't shooters, mm. so you, you you can see it. So that, that that's where it comes to where if you come help set up, you 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 can see that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Fredericksburg, big thing. I used to give them stages all the time. Granted, great, great help. The people, the people go out there and actually help set up. Thank them because somebody's got to do it. Yeah. But they're also not concerned about, well, this is the way the drawing looks. They're just mm -hmm. going to, they're going to put it on the ground so that they can get shooting. And that's where it leads me back to that. Uh, it's, it's hard for you to delegate because you don't know what their person is going to do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So looking back at Delmarva, you accommodated over 300 shooters and survived some pretty inclement weather. I remember, I remember the, I remember that weekend. I was not there that weekend, but I remember, well, Frank is probably getting pissed on right now. This, that probably sucks, <laughs> but fuck it. Um, but how are you seeing the, that match in retrospect? Um, in retrospect, I think it went, Awesome. I mean, we actually had 374 people sign up, um, 350 showed up, and the ones that didn't showed up didn't show up on Saturday because of the weather. So I could have had 374 people actually shoot that match, and that's just a little section match, which and that's a lot of people. Um, that's an achievement. I, I mean. I, if you look at 350 matches, is the most I've had. Yeah, no. Well, if you look at if if you're looking at purely numbers and 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 how matches have gone lately, like in just across all the shooting sports, that's a good freaking number. Like, it is. um, you know, compared to like, I remember when three gun matches had up to 300 shooters, and like now you're now you're looking at 
you know, average major match in three gun, you're looking at 150 shooters. Um, yeah. you know, bigger matches, you're looking, okay, 200 shooters. Uh, I think Rio Salado, whenever they do, or yeah, Rio Salado at Superstition Mountain, um, I think they get over 300 shooters there. And that's probably one of the only matches in the country that still can, that still have that, uh, have a showing, but that match has been around for over 20 years. So like yeah. in many cases in the shooting sports, like attendance has kind of gone down uh, yeah. because, because there are so many options available for major matches within an area to where people can now pick and choose. And so like what, I, what I'll say is you set a benchmark of your quality and level of, of talent and building a good match to where like you are now one of those chosen matches that people want to go to. So, I mean, that's kudos a, to you. That's, that's what I want. I, I, I don't want it. What I try to do is I look our, our core, our core shooters are C and B. That's what you first got to look at. I mean, I don't want to say unfortunately, but that is what you have to look at. So 350 shooters, more than half of them are C and B shooters. Yeah. You can't go out there and make something so stupid hard that they'll never want to come back. Mm -hmm. But you also got to make something challenging for the people that are really good, your GMs, your masters, your, your really good A shooters, that they're going to be challenged. So that's, why I've switched even with uh, Virginia State, I've switched to these uh, more technical uh, stages. A lot of people come up and go, "Oh, well, that's not that's not much, that's nothing." But then when they walk away, they're like, "Oh man, I bombed that," because they did they they just respected it because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they looked at it they looked at it as like, "Oh well, you know, I, I'm 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 a GM. This this is going to be easy." Well, it's not as easy as you think it is. It's, it's technic technically sound. You you have to be able to balance your speed and your shooting at the same time. My matches are fast. And if you mess up, all it takes is one mess up, and you're going to be playing catch up again. And, and that's the way I like it. And I, it seems like other people are liking it that way too because it keeps that competition really close. I know they, they're like, well, I, I got to be on my best game. When mm -hmm. I go to Dave's match, if I'm not on my best game, then I'm, I'm not going to do well. And then I'm not going to get one of them fancy belts that Dave gives away, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, and, and the weather, the weather, I think, I don't know. It was it not. It, it was not the level of downpour we got during staff day at Delmarva in twenty three. Right. It wasn't as bad as last year's Delmarva, yeah. but it did get that one point where it started coming down, and that was when I ran around and told everybody, "Yeah, I was getting ready to stop," and then it rained really hard. It, yeah, typical. Yeah, that was typical Marine Corps thing. You know, it's gonna stop. No, <laughs> no, don't give people fault. I, I was Who about ate the to charms. Who ate the charms? <laughs> I, I was about to shoot Logan stage and I, I I just told myself like doesn't matter. Like still gotta still gotta go out there yeah. and do your best. Yeah, um honestly, look, yeah, Del Marva <laughs> too was like, man, that two hour drive to GRB, like I left my house being like, fuck this, I don't want to shoot. And I was like, I got you got two hours to change your mind. You got two hours to get into match mode, right? Yeah. So yeah, I mean at least at least I gave you waterproof targets. Yeah. No, you didn't, those, you didn't have to worry about bags. Yeah. <laughs> no, you you uh at, like logistically, you you took care of us. Like it was never there was never a point at which we felt like um the targetry or any of the stuff supporting the match was like short or that you were skipping. And that I, was, I was hoping the waterproof targets would uh, keep the rain away. <laughs> yeah, you buy them, it won't no, rain. But no, it, it was just work. it was a lightning rod. You were like, you just stood up and looked at the skies <laughs> like what Especially else? up there in the mountains. It's, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That area is they, they they obliged you that way. But you know, a major match doesn't happen without the community. Is there anybody that you'd like to thank for their support in uh helping you with your match? Oh man, it there's so many people. I mean, I, I got my core group of ROs that are always there. So, I mean, shout out to all those ROs. I mean, there's just too many to name. But, I mean, hey, Marine Corps shooting team. I mean, geez, come on, guys. If it wasn't for you guys, I mean, straight up, 
Virginia State three years going. Um, even Virginia State when I wasn't the match director. If it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't have had the equipment and we wouldn't have had the, the, the bodies to, to staff these matches because you guys are always there and you have the equipment for to help out. Um, I mean, that one year you guys even brought the uh, the um, armors. Mm -hmm. and they were out. They were out there fixing people's guns. I mean, come on, that was awesome. <laughs> um, you know, and there's there's one person I am going to shout out big time, um, Joshua Cardanas. I mean, that guy. He even came up to uh, Del Marva on Saturday in the rain. wasn't even shooting. Just came up and he was like, hey, "What can I do to help you?" And he ran around, and our our quartermaster was a little lacking. And he ran around and he did everything, everything. I got, I got to tell a quick story about Cardi B. Um, <laughs> he showed up at Del Marva, and then I was, uh, uh, you know, I, I had invited him to come shoot. I was like, Dad, Dave will probably make it happen. Um, but he's like, no, I'm just here to work. And the first thing he does is drop like a bag full of zip ties in the mud. And I just like, I don't help him at all. I just stand over his ear and be like, the quality of cheap Asian labor in this section is decried <laughs> so drastically. <laughs> Dude, he worked his butt off. He, he, yeah, no, he, that guy. I mean, that that's just is a testament to who he is. Like, he will I, drive what, over what two I, hours just to go work a match when he has nothing else going on. When I think about what a Marine should be, I mean, there's a lot of good Marines. I mean, seriously, a lot of good Marines. But when I look around and when you, when you, like, read about Marines and what a Marine should be, that, he he's it. He's mm -hmm. it. Nah. He's at the top of the Christmas tree, like in fit yeah. rep standards. Like he's, he is one of the most, he's a very intelligent, uh, very empathetic and extremely helpful individual, like just quality people. He's yep. the kind of guy you always want to have around on your team. Mm -hmm. That's but my shout out. <laughs> I'm gonna give a shout out to Dono Beer because he's a freaking sandbagger still in oh, B class. God. No, he, B -class made a, he, made a, he made A class. He made A class. Oh, he made A class. He finally, uh, GRB finally gave him his classifier to get to A. I, I congratulated him. Yeah, Good he should him. be a master. Yeah, <laughs> probably. He's right up there. He's shooting right up there with me. He should be a master. So. <laughs> But other than that, um, that's all the covers that we have. Dave, is there anything else that you would like to leave the listeners with before we sign off? Ooh, I mean, I don't really know. I mean, come out and shoot some matches, have fun. I mean, in the end, just make sure you have fun. Yeah. Well, the we appreciate you coming on. We appreciate everything that you do for the community. Um, and taking care of the shooters up here and giving them their fix. Uh, we appreciate you coming on the show. Um, so other than that, to the listeners, we hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, you know, please come out if you're from the National Capital Region, you know, Mid-Atlantic Region, North Carolina. Uh, come out, support Dave. The matches he's putting on, you, are, you will not be disappointed. Um, and just come out and have fun. And we hope you enjoyed this. Let us know how we're doing, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.